Good afternoon. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope that you um, found some good worship online that you were able to connect with and that encouraged you. I hope that you were able to stick your nose outside the door a little bit and at least look at the flowers, walk through your yard, and be encouraged by the signs of spring. I had every intention of being outside in the pavilion today, but the guys showed up here at the church with their zero turn mowers and it's a sunshiny day and the churchyard hasn't been mowed and so they're outside mowing. And so with the noise of the mowers, you would never have heard the birds sing and you certainly probably wouldn't have heard me. So here we are inside yet again. Today, on the second week of Easter, we're going to be looking at another after resurrection encounter where Christ seeks out some folks who had been in Jerusalem through his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and yes, his resurrection. It's the night of the resurrection, as a matter of fact. It's Sunday evening. So today we're gonna to be looking at Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 13. This is the Emmaus Road experience. Please follow along with me. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these events, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short with sadness written across their face. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all of the things that have happened there in the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early in the morning, this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing and they had seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. We're gonna end there with verse 24 for today, because there's a lot in these first few verses, enough for us to think about and ponder. So this morning, or this afternoon, whenever you see this, we find two of the disciples, Cleopas for sure was one. The other one remains unnamed. Some people think it might have been the wife of Cleopas and perhaps they were headed back home after the events of the crucifixion and resurrection. Emmaus is seven miles away from Jerusalem, about a two, two and a half hour walk. And so as they walk, they are talking. They're talking about everything that has gone on they're in retreat, as it were. They're walking away from, like I said, from Jerusalem. They're walking away from the other disciples. They're walking away from the place where Jesus was resurrected. They're walking away from their point of pain, for walking away from the place where they lost their hope. They're walking away and going home. Isn't that what we do in seasons where life is difficult? We walk away. We walk away from the church. We walk away from friends who could support us. 
we walk away from the pain. And that's exactly what was going on here with these um, two disciples. They're leaving it all behind. And as they walk, they're talking with one another. They're talking about how the events made them feel, the sadness, the dejection, the gloom and doom of what had happened. They're focusing on all of the negatives and we never hear them say anything about the positive, not yet. As they walk, Jesus comes upon them and walks beside them, though his countenance, his presence is hidden from them by God. Again, that's very much like our walk in our life. Jesus is there, we just never see him. It's much easier to talk to a friend, to share our emotions with someone who is physical and right there, and to completely miss the presence of the risen Christ to not understand that he is in our midst. And as he comes up to them, Jesus says to them, Why, what are you talking about as you walk along? And they respond, are you the only person who doesn't know what's going on, what's happened in Jerusalem? Are you the only, some versions say, stranger? They really didn't see him for who he was. And he says, Tell me about it. Why do you think he says that? Why does he ask them to bring him up to speed? Because he doesn't want to assume. Even though he knows what's going on, he wants to hear it from their mouths, from their lips. You tell me what's going on. And so that's exactly what they did. They told him everything that had happened. They talked about their disappointment. They talked about the crucifixion. They talked about who they thought Jesus was. And that's so apparent here in this chapter, in these first few verses, that they didn't get who Jesus was. And that's what pricked Jesus' ears. That's what made him pay attention to them. Even though he knew, he heard it from their own lips. Listen to what they say. This is in verse 19. They said, he was a prophet who did powerful miracles. He was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and church leaders handed him over to be crucified. We had hoped he was the Messiah, the one who was gonna save us from all of this, but they killed him. They got that he was a prophet. They saw him do miracles. They knew he was a, a mighty teacher but they stopped short of seeing him as their Messiah. After all, he was dead. They put him in a tomb. And even though they had reports of him being resurrected, their hearts didn't go there. They were so overwhelmed by the negative that they never ever saw the positive. Jesus was there to change all of that. And we will see that happen in the days to come. But that's us. We don't see Jesus as our Messiah, as our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the one who came to save us, not from a military standpoint, that's what they were looking for, but who came to save us spiritually, who came to walk with us. You see, they and us, we have this perception problem. We don't perceive that Jesus is with us. Jesus doesn't have a perception problem, though. 
He knows that he is right here beside us. Let me see if I can find the sentence that I wanted to share with you. The issue is never a matter of his presence, but our awareness of his presence. Our problem is a problem of perception. Sometimes I guess we think we're just going through it all, all by ourselves and Jesus isn't there with us. That's the way many people feel right now, I'm sure. And as they have come through Easter, even though they know the story of Christ and his resurrection and his death and his love, they don't get it. And then there's that whole world of people outside the faith that really don't get it. But the really neat thing is, is that Jesus loves us so much, he's not going to leave us where we're at. He loved these two so very much that he was not willing to leave them where they were at. He was willing on this day of resurrection to leave his men who were in relative safety in the locked room of Jerusalem and go pursue the two who had left the flock. We've seen him do it before. He did it last week as we talked in one of our studies. That's the nature of Jesus, that he will not leave us alone. He will not leave us forsaken. He will not leave us in our time of trial and trouble. He will pursue us just as a shepherd pursues his lost sheep. And here we find him on this first day of resurrection, still loving, still reaching out, still pursuing. Maybe we need to remember in all of this, the verse from Matthew that says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. And in this scripture today, we have living proof. He was there for them then, and he is there for us now. Help us, Lord, to see your presence in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time to be together. We thank you for your word that speaks to our heart and shows us where we're at and shows us where Jesus is, that he is right there with us. Father, no matter what we're facing right now, whether it's the virus or other illnesses that um, attack our bodies, whether it is trouble within our families or within our job, wherever we are, you are there with us. You will not leave us and you will not forsake us. Help us to look to you and to your son, Jesus Christ, as the source of our strength and our faith. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the sunshine that is finally coming down upon us. Thank you for the grass that smells so sweet as it's being mowed. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you for congregations that reach out and lift up and hold us tight together. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we just give you all thanks and glory and praise. And the people would say, amen. Amen. Amen to you all. Have a great afternoon, a great day tomorrow, and we'll be back here on Wednesday, and we'll continue our walk to Emmaus. The peace of Christ be with you all. Take care as you take care of others.